Fox News has got its medical team come out. We're going to play a clip of that here in just a few minutes. And said, look, she needs to release her neurology records. And, and I was thinking, uh, who better to bring on? Somebody that's known Hillary Clinton, somebody who's been in the Council on Foreign Relations, somebody who uh, was the head of uh, psychological warfare for the State Department, uh, co-author of many of Tom Clancy's books as well, Dr. Steve Pachinik of stevepachinik.com. He's an MD and PhD, uh, an American psychiatrist, former State Department official, author, and publisher. Uh, so he has MIT degree uh, as well, trained in psychiatry at Harvard and international relations at MIT. To specifically talk about Hillary, look, it always comes up in elections to say somebody's got a health problem or somebody doesn't have a health problem. And, and, and a lot of times it's a red herring. But with Hillary, every day now, she doesn't know where she's at. She suddenly starts having clearly seizures. Again, I have an uncle who's in a motorcycle accident, and he, you'll be sitting there with him. He'll suddenly start doing the exact same thing she does. Uh, when she was out under the bright lights at the DNC, she started doing it repeatedly. Uh, she's falling and stumbling downstairs. She looks bad. She has lesions on her tongue. Dr. Steve Pachinik isn't just a top psychiatrist. He was a board examiner. And, and he ran entire medical facilities. And so he was also bringing up the fact that Charles Krauthammer uh, had at one time actually worked under him in one of these programs. So to break all of this down, and Krauthammer's saying there's serious questions as well, uh, is Dr. Steve Pachinik, uh, doctor specifically, uh, go over uh, your your uh, background for folks that may not know who you are, your your. A curriculum background, your letters, and then let's get specifically into what you're seeing with Hillary Rodham Clinton. Number one, uh, my background is I went to Cornell Medical School, received my MD in 1968. Uh, then I went to Harvard uh, in 1971, became a psychiatrist. At the same time, I went to MIT to receive my PhD in international relations. I became board certified, and eventually I was brought in as a board examiner in neurology and psychiatry. But in my private practice in Washington, D.C., despite also working at the State Department as a DAS under Nixon, Ford, Reagan, Bush, and others, I also treated congressmen, senators, and major uh, politicians. I clearly won't say who. The key issue for me and why I'm, I'm grateful you brought me on the show again, and as you know, you didn't know what I was about to say, and I didn't want anybody to know, but the point of fact is the two physicians, Dr. Siegel and the other uh, gentleman from Mount Sinai who are on Fox News were absolutely correct, as was Charlie Krauthammer, for demanding that we have an independent investigation of Hillary Clinton. Why do I say that? Number one, for some time now, she has had an, uh, a history of seizures. One sees it. She has a hard time going up the steps. She's totally confused. And in one of the most revealing interviews that was done on Fox News, where Chris Wallace repeatedly asked her, did you or did you not uh, commit a malfeasance or a felony with the emails, she just repeated total lies. In my business, given the fact that she's had a history of three major concussions, 1998, 2009, 2012, she'd been put on anticoagulant. And I will go over her medical record as it was written by her internist, Lisa Bardak. She evidences a serious problem of neurological and cognitive deficit in the brain, be it post-stroke syndrome, Syndrome, or if I said, if you have constant uh, thrombosis in the brain, you have to look for occult tumors. Occult tumors meaning secret uh, uh, tumors that are in the brain, which were biopsied when she was at the Physicians and Surgeons Columbia in, 19, in 2012 and remained there for six months. There's no question in my mind that Columbia Physicians and Surgeons has a mandate to reveal the CAT scans, the MRI, and every test that they had done regarding Hillary Clinton's physical status. Absolutely. So, so just release it all, and you don't have any excuses to do it, or you're hiding something clearly. Correct. Now, let me, let me go over this, Alex, and I appreciate it, and I want the audience to understand, as most of the audience realizes, 
I don't usually come on the show unless I have something that I'd like to tell the American audience, which is very, very important. One of the other issues in my world as a psychological operations and intelligence officer and as a DAS, I used to give lectures on presidential health at Fort McNair and West Point. And what I used to go over was how we in the Republic hide the health of our president. And I start with Woodrow Wilson, who had a stroke. And for a year and a half, he was in a semi-comatose, comatose state where Colonel House and his wife was running the White House. We can't have that. Secondly, we had FDR, who was a cripple. And the Secret Service made certain that no one, but no one took pictures of Franklin Roosevelt as a cripple in three time in the administrations he was in. Then we had a far more serious problem. When I was, I was at Cornell Medical School between 64 and 68, a pathology class was given to us that really revealed the story of an individual who went into surgery at Cornell in orthopedic surgery and became psychotic. Who was that individual? It was John F. Kennedy. Subsequently, we found out that John F. Kennedy came into the White House illegally and in the Navy illegally because he had a Addison's disease, A-D-D-I-S-O-N-S, which meant that he had a deficiency and absence of the adrenal gland and had to be given daily shots of steroids, amphetamines, and vitamins from Dr. Feelgood. As a result of that, he became psychotic, inappropriate, and we ended up with the Cuban Missile Crisis because Khrushchev saw exactly what was happening, that we had a totally disoriented, incapable uh, president, and eventually he had to go. Subsequently, we had a problem with Nixon, whom I had worked with, not directly. He had stress and had uh, developed thrombophlebitis. He became paranoid as a result of Watergate and he had to leave. We then had a a president whom I worked under, I did not work directly for, who had Alzheimer's. Whether he had Alzheimer's towards the end of his administration or from the beginning is a very serious question. There's no question in my mind that during the Reagan administration, I had been working for James Baker as well as Bush Sr., who was then the vice president. Now we have a case where you have complete sociopathy, you have lies upon lies. There's no question her personality is one of the complete sociopaths. Whatever they're saying about Trump right now, that he's sociopathic, he's not capable, he's impulsive, that's all nonsense coming from 50 totally incompetent Republicans whom I know personally and had worked with, Michael Hayden, who's director of the CIA and was the director of the National Security Agency, was nothing more than a political general. In the military intelligence field, as one of my generals once said, he's a moron, and he was not considered the brightest of all. The only man I would respect among all of them was John Negroponte, who was a serious ambassador. All right, so Dr. Pachinik, again, um, you have treated world leaders, treated U.S. leaders, that's yes. all on record. So you are an expert of experts. You are sitting here, you know, certified to look at this neurology as an MD and as a psychiatrist uh, on record and the former head of psychological warfare of the State Department. So you're you're perfectly vetted, probably the best person in the world to talk to on this. I'm not a rocket scientist, but I can ask somebody, hey, do you have Parkinson's disease? Yes, I do. I mean, I can see when someone looks like they have a neurological disorder or uh, Parkinson's type, you know, spectrum or whatever. Now, when I'm not a doctor. I have no training in it, but I can just, I've seen it enough to know what it is. You as a truly educated expert, six months, a few years ago, disappearing into this brain tumor specialist facility, uh, all the bizarre behavior, uh, her obviously degenerating, acting so angry, uh, looking disoriented, having many seizures, uh, looking at her just in the videos you see online. If you saw that of a lay person, what would you say is wrong with them? I would say that she has a a cult brain tumor, either glioblastoma, or that she has possibly an onset of Alzheimer's disease, which begins as what we would call a subcortical vascular dementia uh, uh, because of thrombosis to the brain. Either way, 
it has to be ruled out. If she has early onset uh, dementia, which she may well have, which came out in the issue with Chris Wallace and her, her quick discussion as a short circuit, and then Keen, Kane, her uh, vice president, took over, it, it clearly said to me, that Hillary at this point is not qualified physically, mentally, or emotionally to be the president of the United States unless she is given a clean record of health, which I doubt will happen. Now, let me give you exactly what happened. They, pr they produced a most cockamamie or a very uh, run-down or watered-down medical history. This is public. Her primary care physician is Dr. Lisa Bardak. I don't know who she is. She's an internist, cons uh, consistent with their position. She's the chairman of the Department of Medicine at Mount Kisco, New York. Now, you, you're talking about a very small town. In comparison to where Hillary was really treated, which was physicians and surgeons at Columbia. And Columbia knows very well, the neurologists there know very well that she was worked up with an MRI, CAT scans and everything else. Sure, so what they're doing is she's going to some local treating physician, doing a limited thing, not sharing the other medical records from years ago, and then putting that out Correct. as her supposed medical history. Correct. Then she has anticoagulant treatment. Now, is she still on any coagulant? We have to know that. That means she's bleeding out. She had three episodes of concussion that she even documented, 98, 2009, and 2012, where she had to be treated for 12 months. She wore a glasses that are called Fresnel prism glasses, which are usually worn by patients who have diplopia or double vision, and they have to be able to see better. And that was shown in the Benghazi uh, inquiry. Yes, sir. What are you seeing when you see her, what looks like as a layperson, a seizure where she seems to not have balance, and then she's been taught to smile and act like it's fun, but people say, are you okay? Well, what you see there is the classical uh, petite mal, which can go into a grand mal seizure. And then what I saw was the gentleman who came by her, the Secret Service, and gave her diazepam, which is Valium, in order to reduce the seizure activity. And that's the key. They're running up injecting her uh, with what? I, I guess a depressant to stop the brain activity? Yes, an anticonvulsant medication. She would be on Divatin and other parts. But here's the issue. The issue I'm getting to is far greater than even Hillary Clinton. It's the problem that we have with the Secret Service, with the FBI and the CIA, and I come back to it again and again and again. I don't wish her uh, illness, but I do condemn the Secret Service for the fact that their only loyalty is to their job and to the President of the United States. It is not to the Republic. They have covered up more malfeasance more irregularity and more miscreant behavior. Dr. Virginia, we'll get into that, and I'm glad that you're making this a compendium, not just about Hillary Clinton. No, th that there's a history of this. Uh, sure, sure. There's a history of it. You, you know Hillary. You've not even you really bashed her on this show. You didn't said nice things about her. The larger issue, though, is she looks extremely ill, extremely out of it. It's one thing if the president's got a heart problem. It's one thing if they've even you know got a cancer that can be treated. But if she looks so angry, looks so crazed. Uh, or looks out of it uh, and is reportedly so mean and so rude to people now. Uh, I mean, to me, that just is what I've heard about Alzheimer's or dementia, and it shows she's degenerating very, very quickly. I'm just concerned about putting somebody like her in power, uh, uh, I mean, for the obvious reasons. So so what do you think should specifically done? Obviously, call for the release of her full medical records. What else? Well, there's call for release of a full medical record. At the same time, I would want Congress to call in the Secret Service to demand exactly what they have witnessed, what they have seen under oath. What are you injecting her with? There should be congressional hearings. Why does a person follow her and, with, and with a tranquilizer they dart? They won't do that because it'll look partisan. But at the same time, I would put a gag order on everyone who's involved in any way in adding ad hominem comments. I mean, the fact that 50 Republican uh, ex experts, all of whom were neocons, Zelico, you have uh, Zelic. No, I get it. You don't want political points. You care about the Republic. I don't care about the political points. I care about the mental health and the medical health of this woman, and it has to be addressed ASA. Is she unfit to be the nominee? At 
this point, yes. Unless proven otherwise. But, uh, let me ask he you is this. Not because not qualified to be the president of the United States as of today. She neither has the, his, the mental capacity, the physical capacity, as we've seen them bring her up. The I interrupt you, Dr. Machinic. Start over with that statement because we're going to put this out. Start over. I demand that she have an independent medical neurological evaluation by people who are neither Republicans nor Democrats to evaluate her mental status and physical status to be the president of the United States. I demand that Columbia PNS release the record on the neurological workup of a president of the United States, a potential president. Columbia has a far greater obligation to the country than it does to its patients. The HIPAA law, which ironically was brought in by Bill Clinton, has to be broken because it's a far greater issue than the, than the concern of one individual. We are now talking about the nation state. What we've seen is a lot of distraction of a group of her people, including Republicans who may or may not have been co-opted, to say that Trump is impulsive, he's erratic. In fact, the reality is that's a lot of distortion and distraction which belongs to her. And in time... Well, I've actually he, found Trump is super disciplined and is just like a, a workhorse and very, very calm and focused uh, in, in private. And then that's what folks that know him correct. say. Correct. Well, I'm not I, here. I don't want to get into politics, but let's make it very clear. There is no history that I know about Trump where he has actually killed individuals intentionally or unintentionally. Her history. Yeah, Trump hasn't gone around and destabilized all these countries and said, correct. I came, I saw, he died. Correct. Now, we can honestly say her judgment about Libya is in question. Was it her judgment because she thought that was the best thing to do? Or did she have an underlying psychological, neurological problem which compelled her to act and be aggressive and go to war, as she did in Iraq and elsewhere? Well, that was now, my next that, question because you are a top uh, a psychiatrist. Let me expand on that. A lot of times you read about dementia, you read about uh, brain tumors, People tend to start acting like kids. They tend to have rages. They tend to get aggressive. In a lot of videos, I thought it was just her acting like a kid for her audience. But more and more, I see her on C-SPAN and things off to the side acting like a little kid, uh, but also kind of raging and stomping around. Uh, what is that indicative of, Doctor? It's indicative of onset of possibly dementia. A dementia, in her case, would not be unusual because she's 69 years old, going on 70, with all due respect to her, she's been under a lot of stress. She's flown all over the world. She has been dehydrated, but she has a, 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 she has a well-known history of having concussions. Not just one concussion, but concussions in 1998, 2009, and a major concussion 2012, where she had to wear the Fresno prisms, which means that she has an ongoing post-concussion syndrome and or a glioblastoma, or an onset of dementia, or all three. But without an independent evaluation, without the release of the records from Columbia, not from this Dr. Lewis Bardak, I don't know who she is. And I, I, now, I understand, I release the real medical records. Why was she disappeared for a year, six months in treatment? That's not blood clots. No, that is far more serious than a blood clot. And also, in my usually when I examine the resident, I often ask, what does it mean when you have a history of multiple blood clots? Now, usually, the, most residents don't know that. The answer is that we have a hidden tumor. And in this case, it could well be glioblastoma, which is a very serious uh, And by tumor. hidden, sir, can you give us the, the technicals? You mean it's a deep tumor? Deep tumor, which is quite aggressive or can be controlled with uh, chemotherapy, radiation, or some other... Well, we have to speculate. I mean, she looks pretty bad. She disappears for large periods of time. She has to be to the bathroom longer during a debate. Correct. Uh, if, if this were to occur in, in, in Trump right now, if Trump were to evidence the kind of behavior that she evidenced, with all due respect, we would immediately have asked for Trump's background in terms of medical history, psychiatric history, and all. It's also interesting that throughout her whole life, even as a, as a, a senator, she keeps on confabulating a story where she created all kinds of economic opportunity 
Yet today I wrote a whole blog saying that she didn't create any jobs in New York State. In fact, 25% of the jobs went under through her eight years of a tenureship and then had to pay the Houghton family, who the Corning Glass, she paid them $330,000 for speeches, uh, paid 220000 to the eBay family, when she in fact accomplished nothing. So what she Sure, well let's expand on this. Well, what does the psychology say of her and Bill that they would steal the George Washington uh, plates and cutlery. Well, in that sense, you have what I've always said. You, you have basically a very low-class sociopathic family of foliadeurs, which really is an arrangement of two people. You're talking about white trash. Uh, in effect, yeah, that's not a diagnosis, but Bill has never been uh, honest. Bill has never accomplished really anything. Bill is born of a mother who was in the prostitute business. He came out of Hope, Arkansas, which was the headquarters of the mob for the Jews and the Italians. And, I mean, that history is well known. But to come forth and then bring us, again, another problem of sociopathy, we have to start to ask the question, what's the underlying mental... Let's answer that straight problem? ahead and talk about the Iran 400 million... Then we're going to shift gears into the mass murderer's uh, father showing up at the Hillary rally. We are back live. Dr. Steve Pachinik, MD slash psychiatrist, a board certifying individual who's run entire federal facilities, treated presidents, you name it. Uh, went through a whole history earlier of how there's this long term program of bipartisanly of covering up serious illnesses, a lot of times because vice presidents uh, and others want to basically be running the show. That means George Soros, I guess, in the case of Hillary. But Hillary is falling down. She is suddenly doesn't know who she is in press conferences. She won't give press conferences. She spent off and on a year uh, in a very secretive medical facility that deals with brain tumors. I wanted to play a brief clip before we shift gears to another subject with him, uh, since he mentioned it, this Fox News clip from Hannity. What do Hillary Clinton's neurological records show? Not the ones she put out from her little family doctor, you know, in, in, in New York, that are just limited, but the real ones, the CAT scans, uh, her, her, her true records. Here's a clip. The picture, which shows Hillary Clinton apparently needing assistance to climb a flight of stairs at a campaign stop back in February, was picked up by the Drudge Report, which posted this headline over the weekend, uh, detailing Hillary Clinton's history with falls and speculating that the former Secretary of State could be experiencing a serious undisclosed medical condition. Earlier today, we reached out to the Clinton campaign for a statement, and a spokesman told us that the Drudge Report is shameful, and anyone who buys into that vitriol including yours truly, is shameful as well. So shameful we are. Anyway, but what was noticeably missing from the statement was any reference or rebuttal to the health issues that are alleged by Drudge and others. And Jim Hoft in an article, and, you know, Hillary's handler, I guess, called was it a diazepam pen. What would that be for? So one of the things that happens after having concussion, usually within a year or so, you should re re all the symptoms should resolve. Occasionally, you have a latent or delayed kind of post-concussion syndromes, and seizure so like is traumatic one of those. head issues for a football player. That's exactly what it is. And that can come years down the road. She may have some of the symptoms. You think that's what you're seeing? Well, I certainly think that a traumatic brain injury with symptoms down the road is very, very likely here, especially since she had a blood clot on her brain. And as David was mentioning, that can actually lead to a seizure problem. Someone's carrying a pen that you would use in the case of a seizure, a Valium pen. That makes me wonder about that. We need to see her records to see. Mm -hmm. What's the sequela? Well, they want of Donald Trump's tax. The There's two things we want from her. We want her speeches to Wall Street and the medical records in full. Well said. I mean, how is that shameful when she's falling down? She's obviously having seizures. She looks worse. She's got weird lesions, rot holes on her tongue in multiple shots. She either acts disoriented or like a crazy, uh, I mean, I don't mean to be mean. I'm not a neurologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I've seen Down syndrome children when they are either really bummed out, depressed, or they get these euphoric, crazy things where they look up and, 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 and look like the Joker. I mean, I, she just acts like a crazy person. I mean, she acts like a crazy schizophrenic would, you know, at a four-way stop in downtown Austin. Uh, and, and she looks like a bag lady with her. I mean, I'm not being mean here, folks. I'm telling you, she, she looks like a classically insane person. Is that caused by a brain tumor? Is it caused by something else? Uh, I mean, everyone's just going with the story that, oh, she was in the hospital off and on for a year for a blood clot. 
Dr. Steve Pachenik, uh, again, formerly a board, board certifying psychiatrist, MD, uh, former head of psychological warfare for the State Department, uh, you know, a guy that ran entire medical facilities. I mean, snapshot of this, dead reckoning. Is this a woman getting better from something or worse? There's no question she's worse. Let, let, let me say something. She's not schizophrenic. Uh, let me put the correct words. I know you're saying it in your late terms. And remember, they're going to accuse us, you and me, of being conspiratorial since we've been doing this since 2001. Sir, I totally understand. I'm saying I'm a lay person. I, I'm no, saying no, she no, just... No, 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 Alex, I'm not apologizing. All I'm saying to your audience is when we first said that 9-11 was a stand-down, everybody said we were crazy. And now it's come out. And that came... It, it, now we know, it's, it, that we know it was true. In the same way I'm saying, as I said 13, 14 years ago, Hillary Clinton, and I wish her no illness. I've known her before. I've met her. She's a good mother, and Bill Clinton was a good mother to Chelsea. I happen to know that. But the reality is, when you see her now, for whatever reason, as a physician, as somebody who is an official within the State Department and still helps our government uh, for free and, and, and is, cares about our presidency, I have nothing against Hillary per se. I'm just simply stating that her history of sociopathy, her history of ongoing denial and distortion, particularly when Chris Wallace interviewed her and said, you, you, you're lying. Everything you said about uh, Comey was the reverse, can manifest itself as confabulation, as an issue within herself of having a history of severe concussions three to four times possibly. We know it's in 1998. We know it's in 2009. We know for in 2012, Bill Clinton even stated clearly she was in the hospital for six months under the care of physicians and surgeons. Here is what has to be done. Physicians and surgeons must open their records, not because they're doctors and not because they're sanctimonious and not because of HIPAA laws. We have to open those records because the state of the nation and possibly the world depends on what her mental health is and her medical condition. That's right. When you want to be the president Wait. of the United States, you then make yourself open to the public. Things that were private now must Correct. be public and because you now represent us. And, and, and I certainly agree. So in closing, now, if you have to dead reckon, Dr. Pachinik, I'm going to spend a few minutes on another issue and then let you go. I know you're busy. No, no, let me say the second part. There's no question the Secret Service has to be brought before Congress to assess under oath what they have done and what they have seen. Not one of these things where they remain there for 10 years and then they write their books. That's not going to be acceptable. The Secret Service will be indicted for collusion in terms of creating a problem for the United States of America. Their loyalty is to the people of the United States, not to the presidency. Either they're funded by us and they, re they respond to our request, or we defund them. There is no question the Secret Service for 50 to 60 years has covered up major malfeasance and malpractice that occurred in well, the Well, look, they want to expose Hillary and, and, and others. The well, that, it's the same thing. They covered up for John F. Kennedy. They covered up for Reagan. They covered up for a whole group of people. If that's, in fact, what they do, then they are in collusion with malfeasance. No, and I hear you. Know but bottom line, we need to get these documents out. And, Correct. Uh, I mean, I think it's becoming a major issue, and, and clearly it's, Trump is, is, is dead even or ahead in the real polls. They're putting out fake polls. I've that's never, I, I mean, as a former top psychological warfare expert, a guy that's helped uh, keep governments in power, overthrow foreign governments. For people that don't know who you are, you're a rock star of that, probably more than anybody living. Dr. Steve Pachinik, uh, looking at this election, j just as a media analyst, I've never seen them photoshopping things, delisting Google, dirty tricks against uh, Donald Trump. A, do you agree with that statement? And B, why are they pulling out all the stops? Because they're frightened, and also this is the uh, modus operandi of the Clinton machinery. They have always been crooked. When the Clinton came in the first time around and I worked for Bush Sr., I said to uh, one of my CIA operatives, what in fact happened? How, how did this guy from Arkansas, who nobody knew, 
we knew in the State Department that he was receiving money from mainland China. That was in 88, 89. And my CIA operative told me he's been on the payroll of the Chinese and they stole the election. Remember the old Stalin uh, statement. It's not how many people vote or who votes. It who, it's the person who counts the votes. And whether they have doctored the machinery, whether they haven't doctored it, they are completely complicit in malfeasant activity. Sure, well, they Doc, know it. Let me tell you this. I can't go see a movie like The Martian. Uh, no, it's a waste of time. I can't go see the new Star Trek movie, none of them. Every major action movie or sci-fi movie is how great the communist Chinese are with Politburo's red flags. The Starlet Girl is its communist Chinese colonel. We get our rocket boosters in the Martian uh, from the communist Chinese to save our mission because we're idiots. I mean, it's like Hollywood has become, because that's how you know who you're working for. I mean, Hollywood now, when I see almost any movie, there is red Chinese propaganda in it. And this just started happening two years ago. And let me tell you, it is freaking me out. Well, I wouldn't worry about Hollywood. Having been a producer and I'm part of the Producers Guild, Hollywood is finished. Uh, they have no more capability to develop films than, than the No, past. I agree with you. But w w since when did the red Chinese start running it? Well, that, that's not the issue as much as fact that nobody's going to movies and the millennials are now streaming all of the content. So let's not worry about Hollywood. What we have to worry about now is the fact that now, and let's get into the 400 million, I had the, the uh, uh, four horsemen of the apocalypse, Obama, Comey, Brennan, three horsemen, go in and, and carry and give a ransom of $400 million, part of a $1.7 billion ransom, for four Americans held in Iran. You know how criminal that is? That's treason. If I had done that over the past 30 to 40 years as the head of counterterrorism and international hostage negotiation, I would have been in prison for that. And, and believe me, the FBI would be more than happy to hand me subpoenas. But when the head of the FBI, the head of the CIA, the president of the United States, and John Kerry pay ransom money basically to keep the Iranians quiet of $1.7 billion. Isn't it like that Rudger Kipling said illegal. in that poem that once you pay the pirate, you must do it over and over again? Correct. You never stop. And the Iranians have continuously, they took two more hostages after that. And so once again, they're going through this action of paying off hostages. But everybody knows you don't pay off people. Why do they do it? Because they're cowardly and because they're inept. And I can't tell you how inept they really are. Comey has failed repeatedly. He failed to indict Hillary. He failed to uh, really handle the FBI. What did you make of that, uh, speaking of schizophrenic, schizophrenic speech where he indicts her, she's horrible, she's lied, she's evil, but then no one will go after her. I mean, what did you make of his speech? Well, the, pro the point of the speech was that he, he made a very serious mistake when he had General Petraeus, who had given over eight notebooks to his mistress and had committed a crime that was a felony. And then Petraeus, on top of that, lied. So what did Comey and, at that time, Eric Holder do? They made him a misdemeanor. As a result of that, he, he said that no efficient prosecutor can indict her. What he meant was that he messed up once again. Comey has to resign because he messed up not only once under Petraeus, he messed up again under Hillary Clinton. And you can't have an FBI that could not indict a woman like that because of the issue that they had already messed up under Petraeus. So what we have is compounding mistakes again and again. And an All right, I hear you. Well, Dr. Steve Pachinik, simply amazing info. Uh, anytime you want to come on, just call Nico. We'd love to get you on. I'm, thank you for the opportunity, and uh, God bless your audience. Let me just say one more thing. You offered a couple of years ago to fly to Austin and to be in studio. I know your face hadn't been seen in forever. We could do like Drudge and you know, have you over there in the corner blacked out. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I want to get you a plane ticket here in the next month or so if you want to do it. Come to Austin and check out the facility at, You know, after us talking on air for 15 years. It's 15 now, Doc. Almost I know, 15. and we've had a good friendship. Let's keep it that way. Otherwise, you don't want to see my face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, before you said you wanted to come to Austin. Remember that? Well, yeah, a long time ago, but now 
I'm happy just being in the rural South and working with my people. But the truth of the matter is, let's get the medical records out. And the doctors on Fox News were absolutely correct. They're both excellent doctors. One works at Mount Sinai. The other one's a famous internist. And like them, I said, let's get the medical records and find out what this is all about. And I thank you, Alex, for the opportunity to talk. Thank you. Uh, just in closing in 60 seconds, I think even if the establishment steals this election, which they're trying to set up right now with fake polls, that it's the end, though. I mean, they're, they're really showing their cards. They've got a obviously collapsing, degenerating, it's very sad, rotting woman uh, who they're foisting like a dead, dead king you know, up in his chair. Uh, and, you know, the El Cid trick worked for about 30 seconds, you know, where he rides out against the Moors. But in, in, in the real world, you can't have a corpse in the White House for too long, especially in the age of the Internet. And, and if the Secret Service and others think they can cover this up for a long time, I think they're wrong. What do you think all this craziness signifies, Dr. Steve Pachinik of StevePachinik.com? Well, we're, we're on the process of, of a, a republic which has been led over 30 years by incompetent presidents of the United States who were not qualified, including Obama. I said it from the very beginning. He was a liar. He was a sociopath. He would lie all the way through the White House and couldn't care less. The same thing with Bush Jr. and the same thing with Bill Clinton. The only thing, I'm not here to promote Trump, although I, I favor Trump for one simple reason. He's had a business experience He's going to clean out whatever there is. As to what his personality is, I could care less. But well, wait, you're, you, you're, you're a board-certifying psychiatrist from Harvard and, 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 a, and a you know former head of counterterrorism and a commando before that. So I think you're certified to tell us what you really think of Trump. What do you think of his psychology? Because I read these big psychology things well, in I Atlantic Monthly. You know, like all of us, we're a bit narcissistic, but I think Trump has been able to advance despite the, the problems they had of him. And he was courageous enough to go forth and said, look, I want to be president of the United States. He's the first businessman we've ever He's had. not out to get America. Do you, I mean, do you agree with my analysis that he's not out to get us? No, he wants, if anything, I think he wants, and he picked a very good man in Michael Pence. He wants to get forth and clean out the entire establishment that's totally corrupt, including the Clintons, the Republicans, the FBI, the CIA, the DNI. I mean... Michael Hayden, and then he wants to get in, clean it out, and he would be more than happy to give it over to Pence and to the people that he brings into the government. Well, you He's just showed the inside baseball. Truth is, Trump doesn't want to do any of this. He doesn't even, he just wants to fix it and get out and go play golf. That's exactly right. You know the inside baseball, don't you? Because that's right. the truth. Trump doesn't even want to be president. He just no, can't sit there and watch this happen. He, he's doing it simply because it's a mandate that he felt he needed to do and just clean it out. But he's correct. He read Hillary correctly. He read the problems correctly. He stated that we have a rigged election. Bernie, unfortunately, left and was overwhelmed and couldn't continue. Well, they're, they're pretty freaked out because they know, and it's, it's not a secret. So, I mean, Trump's a listener, been a listener for a long time, and they're really upset about it. Uh, Dr. Pachinik, thank you. SteveBachinik.com, all your great books and material. Let's get you up for an hour soon about the great book about your mom, just from okay. a historical perspective. Thank you, Alex. Thank uh, there you he goes. Alex. Joe Biggs thank has got, thank you, big news on uh, this mass murder at the gay nightclub uh, showing up at the Hillary rally.